Schumann experienced extreme mood swings throughout his adult life, and he lost huge chunks of potentially productive creative time due to depression. When he was depressed, he was plagued by auditory hallucinations, delusional thinking. It was difficult for him to concentrate, so he did almost no composing when he was depressed. But during manic episodes, when his mood was elevated, he composed prolifically. He made use of sharpened imagination, increased energy, racing thoughts associated with his mania. Age 43, he made a serious suicide attempt. He jumped off a bridge into the Rhine River. He survived, but he was taken to an insane asylum where he eventually died of self-starvation. The effect of mood-stabilizing drugs, which we take for granted today, did not exist during Schumann's lifetime. And conditions for the mentally ill in the insane asylums of 19th century Europe were nightmarish. Schumann self-medicated with alcohol, but he noted that drinking, while calming his nerves, exacerbated his depressive tendencies. Music was probably the most effective form of therapy for Schumann. There were times when the act of composing provided him with some temporary inner harmony and forestalled the worst manifestations of his mental illness. There is some epidemiologic evidence that the incidence of psychiatric illness, particularly mood disorders, is greater in populations of writers, poets, artists, musicians, than in the general population. Throughout history, there have been examples of creative geniuses who grappled with psychiatric illness. Schumann, Tchaikovsky, Beethoven, Michelangelo, Van Gogh, Tolstoy, Hemingway, Virginia Woolf, Sylvia Plath. These examples can be beneficial for psychiatrists who are looking to eradicate the stigma associated with mental illness. Because it seems rather perverse to stigmatize a group whose members include some individuals who've made such immense contributions to civilization. Mm -hmm.